first, you ignored me when I tried to just ask you for respect. Then you invite me on your podcast. Then you try to have Charlemagne the defame my character. See, I'm gonna have to call a lawyer and see if I got a defamation of character lawsuit against you. Leave Kwame Brown alone. I don't know if y'all know, but you can do a little research. Kwame Brown was born in Charleston, South Carolina. I don't think I've ever met Kwame, but I know a lot of his family. His family lived in Moss Corner, South Carolina. His father's name was Willie Brown. I don't know how many kids Willie Brown had. I don't know how many siblings Kwame Brown got, but I went to school with his sister and I went to school with one of his, his brothers. Let me tell y'all something. Kwame's mm. father in the 90s, I remember this story. He beat a woman with an ax handle, it was his girlfriend. And the rumor was he buried her alive. He buried her in the area that I grew up in, if I remember correctly. I've been trying to call my dad since yesterday to, to, to confirm the whole story because I literally forgot about this until yesterday. But the, the woman died and he got arrested. Uh, if he's still alive, he's in prison for life because he got caught because he left South Carolina after the murder and came back for his paycheck. Let me tell you something else. His other brother, I don't know if him and Kwame were close, but his other brother shot his baby mama several times and then killed himself. That was like in 08. And his other brother, Kwame's other brother, just went to jail for murder like three years ago. All of this you can Google. I'm saying all that to say, leave Kwame leave alone. Him. That man leave has been alone. quiet for 20 years. He don't bother nobody. Clearly all that, you know, all, all that he's a bust stuff gets to him. And you don't know what people are going through or have been through. But I've seen folks snap for less. And it looks like, you know, Kwame is snapping. And if you look at the history of men in his family, you would know his, his men in his family have a history of snapping. Leave Kwame. Donkey of the Day for Monday, May 24th goes to me, Lenard McKelvey. Uh, contrary to popular belief, this is not the first time I've given myself Donkey of the Day because Donkey of the Day does not discriminate. I mean, I may be kind of biased towards certain people, but, but I don't have any bias when it comes to myself. If I'm wrong, if something I do or say doesn't sit right with my spirit, I have to apologize and do better moving forward. And that's what I'm about to do right now. I want to apologize to Kwame Brown and Kwame Brown's family. I want to apologize to his father, Bill Brown, and, and, and the family of his father. See, last week on this radio, in my attempt to defend a Charleston, South Carolina-born brother like myself, uh, I revealed too much information about that man's family. And even though all that stuff is public record, some things just don't need to be said on the radio, and they definitely don't need to be said by me. When I look back you know, on the way I communicated that, I communicated it all wrong. And I unintentionally triggered trauma in a lot of folks I grew up with who I genuinely love. I'm sure I caused a lot of pain for not only Kwame Brown, but for his family, especially his family in my hometown of Monk's Corner, South Carolina. You know how I know? Because I spoke to a few of them. Uh, I've been on the phone this weekend with, with, with mothers of children and their children. Uh, salute to Shaliba and her daughter, Brianda. Brianda, Brianda. I was on the phone with uh, sisters like uh, Wallet. Salute to Wallet. Oh, she cursed me out good. And, you know, I was apologizing for triggering them, causing them pain because I was casually discussing their family's trauma, man. And, and that's something that I have to stop doing. That's something that we all have to stop doing. I was talking to my sacred purpose coach, Yadi Alba, this weekend. She's like a spiritual therapist. I have her and my clinical therapist. And that's what we were talking about, how we casually discuss each other's traumas. I didn't even think about when I spoke on, you know, Kwame and his family, how many people were impacted by those things I was speaking on. I mean, that's, that's generational. Okay, I, I caused pain and unintentionally unintentionally poked at people's wounds. Okay, wounds that will probably never heal. And I can't take back those words, but I can apologize. You know, I think oftentimes we, meaning black people, we fight each other with our demons, whether true or false, whatever is the worst thing we know about a person. I think we I think we know about a person. We default to that. And that was not my intention. I was not in any way, shape, or form trying to paint Kwame in a negative light. Okay, that black man is not my op. He wasn't my op when I said it. In my mind, I'm defending that man, but I should have been defending him as Lenard Charlemagne the God McKelvey, the professional, and not Lenard Larry, whatever you want to call me from Monk's Corner, South Carolina, talking like I'm home in the town on why I believe they need to leave Kwame Brown alone. That was whack because the conversation didn't even have to go there. The conversation should have been about basketball. Yes, leave Kwame Brown alone because he achieved the goal and a dream that 1.3% of NCAA seniors will achieve and 0.03 percent of high school seniors you know how small a number that is and you know just that's just simply being drafted in the nba if you play 13 seasons and make 65 million dollars you're a success okay 
If you work 13 years anywhere and make that kind of money, you are successful. So salute to that man. The only expectations we have to live up to is our own. That's why I always say success is subjective, okay? My views of success may be different than yours. As long as you're happy, that's all that matters. But we didn't even get into that conversation because my mind automatically went to something that didn't that it didn't even have to go to. In doing that, I unintentionally cause trauma. And since I unintentionally cause trauma, I have to be intentional about causing healing. I'm not about to sit around and have beef with another black man for nothing. Trust me, as y'all know, I have a lot of real enemies who are gunning for me every day. Kwame Brown is not gonna be one of them, okay? I totally understand why Kwame Brown was upset at me. I went low, that wasn't my intention, but in hindsight it was low, and Kwame took it to the floor with me. And y'all be online so excited, ready to see black people go back and forth and tear each other down. I'm not doing that. I'm not going back and forth if I feel like I wronged somebody. I'm going to apologize. That's what I think a good man does. A good man apologizes for the mistakes you know that he made, but a great man corrects them. Hopefully I get the opportunity to do that one day, but for now, I just apologize. And I'm not beefing with a black man who's born where I was born, and has family where I'm from. There's nothing on this planet that I love more than God, my family, and Monk's Corner, South Carolina, the whole low country, the 843. Drop on the clues bomb for the 843, okay? So when I say I sincerely apologize to Kwame Brown and his family and the family of Bill Brown and Monk's Corner, I mean that only thing I'm responsible for is my energy and recognizing my own insanity. And Eckhart Tolle once said to recognize one's own insanity is, of course, the arising of sanity, the beginning of healing and transcendence. I truly believe if trauma can be passed down through generations, then so can healing. Me, Leonard McKelvey, I have never claimed to be perfect. In fact, I'm far from it. I'm not gonna always get it right. The same things people listen to me for is the same things they hate me for because I talk too much. I overshare, I overshare about myself, I overshare about others, and that has historically gotten me in trouble. But we are all works in progress. And one of the most healing things you can do is recognize where in your life you are your own poison. And last week I was poisoned the Kwame Brown, Bill Brown, and their families. For that, I sincerely Apologize. Uh, please let Remy Ma give me Leonard McKelvey, Charlemagne the God, the biggest hee haw. Hee haw, hee haw, you stupid motherfucker. Are you dumb? Yes, indeed. Here's what I think about this entire situation Charlemagne the God, that apology was bull. It was backhanded, it was passive aggressive, riddled with microaggressions. If you have to say, I apologize if I made you feel or if it was unintentional and you're speaking in collateral damage terms, then that's not really an apology. Had you manned up and said, I up. I shouldn't have brought his family up. And you were the one that gave us the insight that you grew up in that town. You knew better. You provided information that most of us did not know. You took information from one platform and presented it on another platform with malicious intent. In my opinion, Charlemagne the God, you are a doxer. Charlemagne the God, I put your old picture in the thumbnail because I wanted to know who was that man. You pump your book and you're talking about black excellence. Charlemagne the God, there was nothing black excellence about how you handled Kwame Brown on your show. You would have been better served not to have said anything. And furthermore, you should focus on real actions in the community. You spend a lot of time on your eyebrows, bruh, but you are not fostering real relationships in the black community, in my opinion. You want us to call you Uncle Charlemagne. You want to sit up there and be five foot six and sit like you sit on a high box and look down. But let me tell you something, Charlemagne the God, you were called out. But let me ask you one last question. Apology and donkey of the day. That's all well and fine. What's up with that cease and desist? You gonna pull that back? Or are you sitting around here playing a game and you think we don't see you? Oh, we see you. And it smells like What do you think? Put everything in the comment section below. If you'd like to see more content, put a like on the video, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell to get the latest update. I am Jaded Nerd. I'll talk to you all next time.